Hi, this is Liz with EC QuickBooks Training, and welcome to Introduction to QuickBooks Bookkeeping Basics. Now, everyone wants to learn how to use QuickBooks for their business, and that's great. However, in order to use it correctly and efficiently, I believe everyone needs to understand some basic bookkeeping principles. This will help you understand what goes on behind the scenes in QuickBooks, and it will help you understand what happens when you enter data in certain areas in QuickBooks. So this video is combined with the PowerPoint presentation and QuickBooks software. So let's get started. Our goal with this video and all of our training videos is for you to have QuickBooks success. We want you to learn how to use QuickBooks and to understand how financial records will be reflected in your company file so that way you can manage your business effectively. I would like to say that I am a certified pro advisor and I've been using QuickBooks for over six years with all my clients and some of these clients are in the construction industry, restaurant service, uh, medical field. I've also worked with companies that are in the manufacturing field and retail. So my bookkeeping experience expands over 14 years. When I start working with some small business owners, sometimes they ask, why is QuickBooks doing this? I don't understand. Where is QuickBooks getting this information? Or why? Why is it doing this? I don't understand. This is why we're going to review some of the basic bookkeeping principles that you need in order to understand how to use QuickBooks. So what is bookkeeping? Well, bookkeeping is the process of recording and categorizing all your transactions that flow through your business. These are all your invoices, your sales, any bills or receipts that you have. If you have payroll, it's entering payroll. If you have inventory, it's managing your inventory and keeping the numbers in stock accurate. So if you think about it, it's a lot. A lot flows through your business and all this has to be entered and categorized correctly into QuickBooks because once it is categorized or entered, what is going to happen is QuickBooks will show you how healthy your company is in financial sense. It will show you where you stand, what your bottom line is. So that's why it's so important to understand the basic principles of bookkeeping in order to enter each transaction that flows through your business correctly. Now let's take a look at the bookkeeping overview. So we get your source documents, which we've discussed is your bills, your invoices, any payroll information, your bank statements, all of your source documents. And we need to enter them in QuickBooks. We need to know which journal we are going to use in QuickBooks. Are we going to enter a bank deposit? Are we going to do a journal entry? Are we going to do it in checks? Are we going to enter a bill? All these are the things that we need to ask in order to be able to enter the transactions correctly. Now once they are entered, then QuickBooks uses the accounts that you have set up in QuickBooks and puts them into the general ledger. The general ledger is composed of your accounts. Now once they're in the general ledger, then QuickBooks gives you a list of all your accounts. These are all your accounts with all your transactions that you have entered. It's a list of all your expenses, a list of you know all your income, all your bills. So once that's in QuickBooks, then QuickBooks will then get all the balances in those accounts and produce the financial statements. Now we'll take a look at all these processes in QuickBooks um, more in detail. Once you have your source documents, then you can go to the home page of QuickBooks where you can find the journal that you need. We can enter purchase orders, we can enter bills, or create an invoice. So in the home page it gives you all the journals that you need. We can write a check or make deposits. Once we enter the transactions from our business into QuickBooks, then QuickBooks will automatically put them into the general ledger. Here is the general ledger, and as you can see, there are checks paychecks, transfers, all the transactions that we've done in QuickBooks with their balances are in here. Once it's in here, then
QuickBooks creates the trial balance. The trial balance is a list of all the transactions in entered in the appropriate accounts that you have set up in QuickBooks. And this is an example of the trial balance. From this list, QuickBooks will then create your financial statements, which is the profit and loss, and balance sheet. As you can see, Bookkeeping provides a system according to the rules of accounting to capture and keep track of everything that goes on in your business. Now let's take a look at what we need to keep track. When you first set up your QuickBooks file, you need to set up your accounts. This is where your transactions are going to be stored. Once you enter your accounts, QuickBooks puts your accounts into a master list called the Chart of Accounts. Let's take a look at this in QuickBooks. From the home page, go to List, Chart of Accounts. As you can see, this is where all of our accounts are stored. When we create a new account, so if we go to Accounts, then New, QuickBooks is going to ask us to choose one account type and click Continue. Let's take a look at what type of accounts there are in the Chart of Accounts. There are five types of accounts that make up the Chart of Accounts and therefore make up your whole financial data. These accounts create the accounting equation which happens behind the scenes in QuickBooks and we'll talk about this a little later. But let's see how we can categorize more in detail these five different accounts. As you can see we have the assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. Under the five main accounts we can have sub-accounts. For example, if we want to have our transactions display that it's an advertising expense, then we have an advertising account, or if it's supplies. And we can do this with all five accounts. Just one quick tip, you want to avoid having expense accounts as bank accounts or classified transactions under miscellaneous. You don't want to miss any tax deductions. Now let's take a look at two key reports that QuickBooks uses. We have already mentioned them. The first one is the profit and loss. The profit and loss is composed of the income minus expenses, then it will equal your profit or your loss. Now which two of the categories above are part of the main accounts in the chart of accounts? If you said income and expense, then you are correct. Let's take a look at the profit and loss in QuickBooks. Here is the profit and loss. Here's your income, your expense, which equals your net income. In this case, it's a net profit. So as we can see, our income is categorized more in detail, as you can see here. And our expenses also have sub-accounts. Now let's take a look at the other report. The balance sheet. The balance sheet is composed of assets, liabilities, and equity. Now which categories above are part of the main accounts in the chart of accounts? If you said all of them, that is correct. All of the above accounts are part of the five main accounts of the chart of accounts. Let's take a look at the balance sheet in QuickBooks. As you can see, here are the assets, liabilities, and equity. And assets can also have sub accounts as you can see here. This is the balance sheet. Now let's take a look at these two reports side by side. These two reports work together. The information on the profit and loss flow through the equity of the balance sheet. In the balance sheet net profit or loss decreases or increases for equity. But why does it flow? Because at the end of the year, only the profit and loss balances of income and expense will reset to zero. The balance sheet does not. The balance sheet continues to increase or decrease accordingly to your income. It is a snapshot of your financial condition. The balance sheet is what tells everyone where you stand at a certain point in time. In order to know that your numbers are in balance and are flowing correctly, it is important that you know the ground rule. QuickBooks uses the double entry bookkeeping ground rule, which is every financial transaction is recorded in the accounts with at least one debit and one credit under the accounting equation. And that accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. 
It is important to know how each account increases and decreases. So let's take a look at the five accounts. Each account has a debit and a credit. Think of it as a T, a T account. On the left side is a debit and on the right side is a credit. And all five accounts have a left side and a right side. However, not all accounts increase with the debit and not all increase with the credit. As you can see, the assets and expenses are the only two accounts that increase as a debit. Liabilities, the equity, and the income increase on the right side or the credit side. One single transaction must have a debit and a credit. Let's take a look at this more in detail. The counting equation is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Any transactions that you record on the left side of the equation must equal your right side of the equation. And whatever you record on your right side of the equation must equal your left side of the equation. That is why your debits must equal your credits or your credits must equal your debits. Now let's take a look at an example. Mark paid a bill of 500 that he received 15 days ago. Which accounts are affected? We will record a credit in the checking account, which is our asset, and a debit in the liability account. So our credit of 500 equals our debit of 500. Let's take a look at more examples. Here we have a worksheet of all the transactions that we've done for the month of January. As you can see, every time we do a transaction, it's on one side of the equation, and the other side of the equation. If our first investment was of $40,000 into the cash account, we will credit our equity for $40,000. As you can see here, we can also do the same transactions on the same side. However, it must equal the right side of the equation. If we're going to credit cash, or take money out of the bank account to purchase equipment to put it into our business, technically it is zero on the left side of the equation and zero on the right side of the equation. After we have entered all of our transactions and we look at our ending balances, if we add 33,500 plus 8,000, it equals 41,500. It should equal the right side of the equation. Our 400, 40,000, and 1,100 equals 41,500. So we are in balance. Our assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Now let's take a look at this in the balance sheet in QuickBooks. At the balance sheet, let's take a look at our assets. In this balance sheet, total assets equals 600. 35,033 and 93 cents. This number should be equal to our liabilities and owner's equity. Let's take a look at that. Let's go all the way to the bottom. And it is. It's 635,033 and 93 cents. So let's make this smaller. Let's reduce all these categories. Let's see. As we can see, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. If your numbers are not the same, if your assets do not equal your liabilities and equity, then you have posted something incorrectly and you need to go back and try to figure out what was entered incorrectly. That's why it's so important to understand what goes on behind the scenes in order to know that your financial statements are up to date and correct. That's why it's so great that QuickBooks is a double entry bookkeeping system. It handles all the debits and credits behind the scenes. But it doesn't mean you're off the hook yet. Not only will you be able to identify the problems in your bookkeeping records, if there are any, but you will also be able to use and understand the meaning of the information. For example, 
If you want to know how much money you are bringing into your business, what report would you look at? Well, that would be the profit and loss. If you want to know how much liability your company carries, that would be the liability section in your balance sheet. Or how much your business is worth, you will see the equity in your balance sheet. Just remember that the better you understand how the numbers flow onto your reports, the better prepared you will be to make good business decisions. It's great that QuickBooks makes bookkeeping easier for non-accountant users by handling the debits and credits. We have come to the conclusion of our video and I thank you for joining us to introduction to QuickBooks Bookkeeping Basics.